I'm Phil Bluegie, and this is my Morgan three-wheeler. Welcome to my Morgan three-wheeler workshop, a place where you can find videos which will help you to understand what goes on inside the vehicle, will help you to carry out routine maintenance tasks, will teach you how to do repairs, little improvements, and also about my upgrades. My upgrades which I make and install along with the owners of the vehicle, they come here and work with me, are mainly for the drivetrain. I produce an upgrade for the Cush Drive centre coupling which sits on the back of the engine, for the mountings for the bevel box and also a chain drive conversion for the rear wheel. If you want to come back and look at these videos pick up all the tips and hints and benefit from it and improve your Morgan three-wheeler experience, then please, just below this video, you'll see a subscribe button. Click on Good morning. This next video will show you how I fit the splines in this alloy steel hub onto the crankshaft. It will also show you how I go about fitting the steel hub into the alloy outer rotor of the centre cush drive. How to pin it in place and then fit it back onto the crankshaft with a new seal and a new o-ring in the back. Enjoy watching. Right, welcome back. We're now going to do the job of hand fitting this alloy steel splined hub onto the SNS crankshaft. It will just about start to go on and then we can give it a few good taps with a mallet and pull it off again. Seems a bit pointless, I know, but the idea is that we will, when we pull it off, see where it's tight on the splines, and we will then use a file to remove all those little high spots and gradually knock it on further and further and further until we can get the thing to slide all the way on. But I'm not going to get it to slide all the way on immediately. I'm going to leave it so it's about five millimeters short and I'm going to pull the last five millimeters on with the nut just to make sure that it's really tight and a really good fit. Now this is where I'm for. Got to get the glasses on. Good look in there, and I can see just at the far end. That's how I'm going to continue until I'm all the way round. I'll then push it on the spline again, get some marks further in, file those out until it goes nicely all the way home. I'll catch up with you again later. So I've uh, finished filing that out now so that it goes on fairly smoothly. And I'm just going to check the length of that coupling hub. I'm going to compare that to the length of the crankshaft and I end up with a difference of 23 millimetres. And that will be, 23 millimetres, will be the amount of shaft sticking out of the hub when we've got it on as deep as we want it to go, which will allow us a few millimetres 
just to pull. Down really tight for the last fitting. Do this without the engine turning over on me because I've still got the spark plugs in. Actually, that is about as close as I need it to be. I'm now going to pull that off again in the knowledge that when we come to do the final assembly, that last five millimetres will pull on really tight. The other thing to note is that in the back of that hub is a plane diameter which is also an interference fit over the plain part of the crankshaft which lends even more support to stop this thing any, uh, having any possibility of flexing. So now we're ready to fit the new hub into the rotor and so we're going to do some measuring. of a millimetre above nominal and this is a very old but nonetheless very reliable internal micrometer made I believe in about 1935 it's American needless to say imperial I use it as a comparator which means that I don't actually read the size off this micrometer but I compare it to the metric micrometer that I've just used to measure the male part of the fitting. This is four hundredths of a millimeter below nominal. Double check this. That gives me twelve hundredths of a millimeter of interference, which is about five thousandths of an inch, which is possibly a little bit on the heavy side. But nonetheless, it will give us a very, very tight, secure fit once that is in. Right, we've been heating that up for some time now. And I can just do a quick check and make sure that it is well and truly expanded. You'll see I have two studs in there to line up the bolt holes for the flange which just pops in easily. Putting a couple of nuts on which I think is probably a waste of time but it makes me feel better. Now 
The sweet corn tin, by the way, underneath is uh, a very convenient way. Supporting the thing on something fireproof, which isn't a great heat sink, it doesn't draw all the heat out of the job, nor does it transfer the heat down to set fire to the table underneath. Well, there you are, hubs fitted in, that is now as good as one solid piece of metal that is never ever coming out again. Now we're putting the assembly up on the drilling machine and we're going to get the three holes drilled through ready to accept the tapered reamer. You will note the ease with which we drill through the soft free machining steel of the original hub. Now we uh, have the holes drilled, we can just put the taper reamer in. The idea being to get them all more or less the same depth when they're just pushed in finger tight. Two are more or less the same, and then we'll hammer them in. All three pins now uh, just pressed in by hand just to get uh, an approximation with the same depth on each one. There we are, belt and braces, a shrink fit, three taper pins, and eventually six bolts as well. And now we're just going to skim the tops off those tapered pins. with a really nice mating face for the alternator rotor which will get it running nice and true. Time now to fit the new oil seal in the crankcase. I'm going to pop the o-ring into position there. Make sure we don't forget to put that in later. Here's the new SKF oil seal. We just make sure, and I already have, that there's absolutely no tiny burrs or anything around the edge of there which are likely to pick up or damage on this sealing coating that's on here. Just pop it into place, push it in with your fingers so it stays put. Then I use a wooden drift. It's got a hole up the middle that fits on the crankshaft, keeps it nice and square. And there you are, new oil seal in position. Never forget with oil seals, the first time they run, they've got no oil anywhere near them and can damage themselves if they are completely unlubricated. So just as a safety measure, I'll just wipe a little bit of oil around there. And similarly, here's the rotor with the alternator rotor, or well the, the, the center rotor with the alternator rotor fixed onto it. Again, 
a little bit of oil smeared around there just around that shaft make sure we don't do any damage when we put the thing on Trusty old spanner handle has come into play again just to sprag that and stop it rotating. I've got a, a mark on the alternator and a felt tip pen mark, but that gives me a clue as to how far on I am. I'm now pulling on that last five millimeters that we left when we fitted the hub. Just as though it's all the way there. We'll take the nut off again for two reasons. One is so that we can measure it to make sure we've got it on far enough. You remember we measured and said that we needed 23 millimetres of shaft sticking out. Twenty-two point I think that'll do for me. And the other reason, of course, is to put a little bit of Loctite on there and the washer underneath it, and then finally tighten it. There's a lot of nonsense spoken about the uh, roll of this nut in here. As I explained in an earlier video, the main reason that nut is on there in my opinion at least, the reason I tighten it as tight as I do and I put a long extension tube on the socket to tighten it up is so that it makes a compound bar and strengthens the crankshaft. Whenever a set of splines fails that failure is inevitably ascribed to the fact that the nut was loose. But of course if you think about it anything that's moving backwards and forwards underneath a nut because the splines have failed in this case, will loosen the nut. There is no way on earth that tightening that nut will make up for a set of splines that doesn't fit properly. The only reason to tighten that nut fully and very tight is to put strength pre-stress into that compound bar assembly. It has nothing to do with keeping the splines in place. If you think about the splines in the centre of the clutch drive plate where they go onto the shaft coming out of the gearbox they have no nut to tighten them they're just a slide fit together but they're made out of the right material and so they don't fail